Hello all, I'm Arvav Singh. I come from a very remote, small village in Uttar Pradesh. In fact, I come from a family of farmers. And here are Gauri and Priya, mother and daughter, probably grazing happily in the villages. And they are my cows. I did not have access to electricity or even anyone in the entire family lineage to tell me that there was something called a computer in the world. And yet today, I am a founder of an AI startup and a Google developer expert in Google Cloud. If you look at this graph, this graph tells us that the number of users of internet has grown exponentially in the past few years. What this means is that more and more people today in the world have access to internet, have access to open source software, mobiles, so softwares, apps, websites. People are using them more and more today. And we have access to pretty much all the same resources worldwide. Today, ChatGPT is pretty famous. So is that a boundary or is that a boundary diminished? Internet is breaking boundaries. It's making the world smaller. And it is with the advent of internet and technology that we are leveling the playing field. Let me tell you a story. There was a person who was born in Madurai, in Tamil Nadu, state of India. And his family lived in a two-room apartment in his youth. And his father spent an year's worth of salary on one ticket to send him to US to pursue his education at Stanford. We are talking about a household name, Sundar Pichai. This person broke financial boundaries around him and made it to where he is today. And let's dive a bit deeper into my own story because that is what I'm here to do. When I was around the age of three, my father decided to move out of the ancestral home at the village which we had and he took us to Assam. Now Assam, even in those times, we are talking about early 2000s, it was still a very remote part of the country and not a lot of people in the main, mainland of India knew that you know, such a state existed. And it was here that for the first time I was introduced to the concept of electricity at around the age of three. And around the age of four, I saw something miraculous. In my classroom, my teacher was playing on the computer some videos. And to me, this was a sheer display of power. To be able to make things happen on the screen, to be able to change things with the click of a mouse, that was, that was miraculous to me. How did she do that? How is that possible? And I got fascinated. You know, this is what I want to do. I wanted to know what she was doing. I wanted to know how she was doing it. I immediately asked, what is this thing you are using? She told me it's a computer. And that was the keyword I picked, computer. I went back home, I asked my parents, what is a computer? Why don't we have one? And they told us we cannot afford it. Cool. What did I do? I started studying more about computers. I wanted to know everything about computers, right? Now here was a small issue. Here was one small boundary that I did not, at the age of four, have computer books in my library. And at the same time, I also did not have access to the borrower's card at the public library. So all in all, I did not have access to books which could tell me about computers. And at the tender age of four, people want you to be reciting poems more than learning about the computer. So how did I overcome this? Luckily, I have been blessed to have three elder siblings and these people had the right books. All I needed to do was beg to them that please let me read your book, I'll return it. So that is how I overcame that particular small challenge at the age of four. I found access to resources way above my age by the help of my siblings. And then there was the school computer lab. Growing up, once in a week, we were used to be taken to the uh, computer practical class in which we were given access to the computers in the lab. When we were entering that lab, there was a very small thing which happened. 
which played a very huge impact in my life later on. All my friends would be trying to find their best friend to sit with on the computers because there were like 40 of us, 20 computers, we had to pair up. So they would, tr they would be trying to find their best friend to sit with in the computer lab. And I was trying to find that one or two people in the class who were totally disinterested in computers. Why? Because I wanted to come out of the comfort of a friend's circle to pursue a passion. I did not realize it then, but that is where it started. I, my passion meant to me so much that instead of trying to sit with my best friend or best friends, I chose to sit with someone who was totally disinterested in the computers so that I had the computer to myself for that entire period. And that actually played a lot of a role in my college years. In my college years, I did just that. Followed my passion, ignored everything else. So, when I was in class 5, my brother told me that he was learning how to make a game by using something called C++. He introduced me to these two books which became my best friends for the next 7 to 8 years. I read through these books, I tried to learn as much possible, I tried to understand what these books were telling me. I made games reading directly out of the book and I gave it to my parents to play, although they did not understand it. But then they said, very good, keep it up. That mattered. And that encouraged me to build something of my own. When I was in class eight, that was 2010, I decided I wanted to build something big. I wanted to build a social network. I wanted to build a social network. Why? Because I had a mobile dial-up connection of 30 kbps. Now at that speed, neither did YouTube open on my computers nor did Facebook. What was the option? Create something of your own, make it work. So I embarked on this mission uh, nevertheless. And when I did that, when I started asking people around that, hey, I want to build a social network. People told me that you're talking above your age, right? You cannot do this at this age. You need to be graduated from a college. You need to have a computer science degree to do this. And I said, this is not true. Age cannot be a factor in deciding whether I can do something or not. At least in the world of tech, it does not matter. I told them this. I said that I'll make it. And I made it. I made this shady looking website, which was named IUNV, basically meaning I, U, and V. It's a social network, right? And while I was building that social network, I got a very nice idea. I also made a search engine. You see a search bar there. I thought that I would take on two of the biggest names in tech industry simultaneously and knock them off. Right? Obviously, that did not happen. But then, when I built this website, I lost it in 2012. And then I recreated it because it was seriously looking very shady. And that is the first feedback I got. And I recreated it again. I kept on iterating over it. I kept on learning new things, learning about new technologies. And I kept implementing them into my website. And then my family shifted to Tamil Nadu. I used to go to school, come back, just start coding, just start rebuilding what I had already built, trying to improve, trying to improve bit by bit. And that is when I was introduced to a new concept. When I was working on my website, when I was working on the search engine, I came across the topic of machine learning. And machine learning and natural language processing played a huge role in the later part of my career. It's actually the basis of my startup right now. So I got introduced to a new concept and I picked them up. I said that this is new, yes. I do not know anything about this, yes. But in 2013, I started studying about machine learning and natural language processing. And then we shifted to Uttar Pradesh. My family again shifted. I kept moving around a lot. And uh, obviously, moving around a lot means you don't really have friends who have been with you like for uh, since you were a child. So moving to Uttar Pradesh, the first thing which I did was actually make it good 
this actually came out good i liked it but then it got it it got cancelled it never got launched it never saw the public this was 2014 i decided to focus on my studies and i shut this website down but then with no one to guide you even that becomes a boundary when you do something like this this website at that point of time was among the top 1000 websites of india by alexa traffic rankings and i shut it down not knowing that this was valuable and in these moments you want someone to be there to guide you and whether not having a guide was a boon or a curse is something we'll always have to think about but then this helped me by the knowledge i had gained by working on this website i was able to crack the second international rank in a cyber olympiad and the prize money that was the first monetary award i got in my life that was used uh, in the first year of my college and i can proudly say that i had a contribution right from the starting of my college years in my college education coming to college i had to travel to west bengal for college and once i came here i realized the pinch that financially we were not great and i started freelancing the first contractual project which i took up it was paid on an hourly basis and this is the amount it paid me 1.5 euro per hour i started from this value and if you are doing the math by the way 1.5 euro per hour if i worked 8 hours a week sorry 8 hours a day and i work 5 days a week that would come around to something near to 250 euros per month now this was actually a good value for someone who had been counting a single rupee all his life so far this was actually a good value but then i had a decision to make a very critical decision i had a boundary which i like to call a boundary it was greed the question was do i need this amount of money what do i need this amount of money for a first year or a second year student in college does he need that kind of money per month the answer was no and i decided that my goal was not about money never about money the goal was always to do something good to build something good to do something good which leaves an impact on the world around me on those who are near me it leaves a positive impact and i decided not to pursue the freelancing full time what i did was i cut it down to the minimal requirement i had per month i used to calculate that okay this is the amount i am going to need in this month and i used to just work enough for that because that gave me a lot of free time to explore the other parts of life the other parts of tech and i made a lot of friends i traveled a lot and it was in this course of meeting people that i found two amazing people who became my co-founders and together we started working on an idea of a real time voice accent changer this idea found love from a venture capitalist called back and capital and they invited me to cross a geographical boundary and i went to taipei in taiwan in taiwan they had a 3 month residential startup accelerator program named hacker fellowship of which i was a part of and this was the view from my window the one on the right and i was looking at straight at taipei 101 and that was actually a very moving thing for me to be able to sit in a room looking at taipei 101 trying to break barriers but there was a problem in taiwan which is language and being a native hindi speaker staying in taiwan all my uh, fellow residential mates were from all over the world they were from all over the world russia china us uh, poland right so all these people together conversations were happening 24/7 in english and that was not my native tongue i had to consciously make an effort 24/7 there to feel included to be included in the conversations and they did accept me in a very nice manner and i believe that was only possible because i overcame my language barrier 
I returned from Taiwan to India, and by the time I returned, my company had raised half a million dollars. And this basically meant breaking another boundary, which was finance. I had complete financial freedom at that point of time, and I was absolutely working on ideas that I loved. I thought of a technological idea which could help people, and I was free to just work on that without worrying about anything, without worrying about whether my family was going to be supported or not. In tech, boundaries are not just boundaries. Don't think of them as boundaries, right? Boundary is something which stops you. Boundary is something beyond which you cannot go. Think of it as a hurdle. Think of it as something which you need to jump over. Think of it as something which you need to step over. In tech, this is possible with the with the access, the same access to everyone, to the same tools all over the globe. It's only a matter of passion and determination and the right luck to jump over these boundaries and for these boundaries to just diminish, to not matter anymore. So I have a question for you. If you are in tech, if you are planning of a life in tech, if you're ever going to switch to a career in tech, do you think you will be bound by such boundaries? Do you think there's anything which can keep you confined in a small space? Do you think that you cannot achieve as high as you dream? That's for you to think. As of today, starting from that remote small village, these are uh, the states of the country where I've been to as a technical speaker, as a guide, as a mentor, and just since 2022, from the starting of 2022, I have delivered more than 75 talks in more than 25 cities of India with a reach of more than 25,000 people attending my sessions. With that, I'll end. Thank you.